Welcome to Mainland, your local regional television station. I'm Tanya Omar, and some of the stories coming up in today's news, Anzac Day, a busy one for rescue service, smoke in the wood, small communities remembrance for Anzacs, and more. A steering failure caused by strong winds and rough seas resulted in a distress call from the vessel Sea Witch on Saturday afternoon. Nelson Surf Rescue were dispatched to a vessel that had anchored about a mile offshore, south of the Glen. A charter boat operated by Barry Bird of Seabird Charters responded to the distress call after Coast Guard were unable to attend due to not having a skipper for their boat. The passengers aboard the Sea Witch had to abandon ship and jumped into the water before the boat ran aground. Mr Bird said that the passengers and crew aboard the Sea Witch had left with good intentions, were well prepared and did everything right when events turned for the worst. Mainland understands that there are no injuries, however the boat, which is still sitting on the rocks at the boulder bank, is past the point of being salvaged. Anzac weekend saw a string of call-outs on Anzac Day, which had the Nelson Marlborough helicopter flying to all corners of the Nelson Marlborough regions. A serious crash involving multiple vehicles at Okara Mio on State Highway 6 in Marlborough added to a hectic Anzac Day for the Nelson-based rescue helicopter service. The crash, which resulted in seven people being injured, including a child, has left one person fighting for their life. Two patients from the crash had to be airlifted to Nelson Hospital in separate flights by the helicopter, with both in serious conditions having sustained multiple injuries. Earlier in the day, the helicopter had flown to Collingwood for a 46-year-old man who had suffered a serious medical event. He was transported to Nelson Hospital in a stable condition for further care. Shortly after returning to base, the helicopter was called to a 54-year-old Wellington man who had fallen while biking in the Wither Hills area near Blenheim. The man was located by the crew on a ridge top and assessed by the onboard intensive care paramedic before being flown to Wairau Hospital in a moderate condition with shoulder and chest injuries. While still at Wairau Hospital, the helicopter was dispatched to the Owen River area near Murchison where a 65-year-old Christchurch man had suffered a medical event while en route to Nelson. He was treated on scene by passerbys until the arrival of St John's ambulance staff and the Nelson Marlborough rescue helicopter. After being stabilised by the helicopter's intensive care paramedic, he was then flown to Wellington Hospital in a critical condition. While departing Wellington, the Nelson Marlborough rescue helicopter was then re-diverted to the serious crash in Okaramiro to assist other emergency services already on scene. There were commemorations and celebrations taking place over this last Anzac weekend and among them was Nelson's vibrant Karini people celebrating their own national day. The Karini people are an ethnic group who fled the Myanmar military regime in the 80s due to persecution. Many spent more than 20 years in Thai refugee camps. I caught up with one of the organisers, Beide, who was in Nelson over the weekend. I'm here today with Bere, a representative from the Karini community. Good afternoon, Bere. Uh, good afternoon. My, my whole name is Bere Pebu Hopsha, one of a uh, spokesperson from um, Karini community in New Zealand. Who are the Karini people, Bere? Uh, be, uh, Karini um, people um, is one of the um, ethnic group from Burma or Myanmar. Uh, we are descended from uh, Mongolia a long, long time ago. How did the Karini people get to New Zealand? Most of Karini people, they came to New Zealand um, as a refugee. They, most of them, they came from to Thailand. They used to live in a uh, refugee camp in Thailand for a long time. And so today you were celebrating the 141st Karini National Day. What is the Karini National Day? Our uh, Karini Nation Day is um, uh, it is a big day for Karini people, and it's a very special day for Karini people. On the thirty um, first of June, they signed an agreement to say that Karini state is uh, an independent state 
uh, state is not belong to uh, not a part of Burma and is an independent country and also uh, not belong to British colony at the time. We uh, rec recognize uh, the 25th of June is Crony National Day. With the elections that have just passed and Aung San Suu Kyi is unofficially in power now, uh, will this affect the Karini state in any way? Um, in a way, they are officially are in power. That is what my view, my personal view. But uh, Karini people are, uh, have a very high expectation from the energy government uh, new government at the moment, but we really, I really hope that um, they are going to make change. Even though not a big change, they might, uh, they might be able to make a little change for the Korean people. That is what I, uh, we all hope for. I noticed as part of the celebrations, there was lots of dance, singing, food. Did the dancers have any meaning? So we we have four uh, four main trip in in Kreni, which is Gaya, Gaya, and Goyo, and what is uh, Mano. So that four trip, they are we are together as a group, as unity. I saw the children dancing. It made me feel, uh, you know, it made me sex ho uh, homesick about it. So it's uh, you know touched my heart. Barbara Whitaker of the Nelson Red Cross Refugee Programme was there to publicly welcome two new Karini arrivals to Nelson. There are hundreds of Burmese former refugee families in Nelson, with about 23 Karini families successfully resettled in Nelson since 2008. Mainland TV caught the last of the Founders Park Anzac fate that drew in crowds of families on Sunday who were there to experience some of the sights and sounds of war from the jeep parked in the windmill entrance through to the anti-aircraft gun firing rounds of ammunition, a table display of weapons drew the men and the boy spectators to check out some of the tools of warfare used in both wars. A saddle from the First World War had everything except the horse on display, as well as a motorbike and sidecar with built-in horsepower from the Second World War. Organisers said that people were lining up at the gates early in the morning to gain access, with an estimated 2,000 people attending. Founders Heritage Facilities Manager Maria Anderson said it was lovely to see the intergenerational families coming through. Activities on the day included old time games like coconut shy, apple bobbing, hooker duck, and entertainment included fire eaters, acrobats, sing-along piano and variety shows. People were treated to two small reenactments and audio effects which created the illusion that low-flying warplanes were flying from one side of the park to the other. Food sold on the day was kept in the spirit of the era, which included tea and scones and boil-up pies. Nelson's council says it's been educating residents on how to use their fires correctly to lower the city's air pollution. However, it seems that some of our city's councillors may not have attended all of those meetings and workshops on the wood burner issue, and may not have followed up on those un unattended meetings. In recent weeks, evening temperatures have been dropping, so it is not surprising that people with certified fireplaces installed in their homes have started to use them. Mainland News has been told that council enforcement officers were called by a resident in the wood to attend a smoky fire in the suburb recently, only to discover that it belonged to a Nelson City councillor who had filled a certified wood burner in her home with paper and had closed down the dampener, creating an excessively smoky fire. Mainland understands the councillor has since been given lessons on how to operate a wood burner properly. Mainland hopes other councillors have paid more attention at wood burner meetings they may have attended, or if absent, have done some homework on the issue themselves. City councillors Luke Ackland, Matt Laurie, Kate Fulton and Ruth Copeland all voted against allowing more wood burners into air sheds that have capacity, but their vote on behalf of ratepayers could be seen as one rule for others and another for themselves, as they are all happy to use wood burners in their own homes as evidenced in this latest incident. Tasman commemorations for the fallen saw small communities come together throughout the Tasman region for a time of remembrance on Anzac Monday. 
Especially poignant for these smaller communities are the descendants and friends with well-known local names of those lost in war who have remained in the district and share the memories of those who were once farmers or orchardists or former sons of those who were called to serve and never returned home. Hundreds of people of all ages turned up for the mid-morning parade in Mapua, led by the Highland Band, followed by local veterans who served in our forces during the war. The local seated cadets also turned out in force, as well as fire and police representatives. The parade finished at the Mapua RSA Memorial Library, and as the years go by, it is apparent that less of our World War II veterans are left to attend these commemorative services. However, the wives and children of departed servicemen still turn out each year around the country, with some even wearing the medals for those now gone. The Mapua service was later followed by morning tea at the newly rebuilt Mapua Hall. We leave you now with some of Anzac Day's highlights. After the break, we'll bring you the latest weather update and some events and happenings coming up around the region. Why would you want to pay as much as $1,000 for a single bed mattress when you can buy a high quality locally made mattress like this for as little as $220? And a queen size mattress could cost you in excess of $3,000, but at Nelson Beds you could have a mattress like this as low as $425. So why would you go out and spend a fortune on your child's bedroom when you can come to Nelson Beds and buy a complete single mattress and base set, a 7 drawer scotch chest, a headboard and a 3 drawer bedside cabinet for as little as $979? So call and discuss our custom manufacturing options and local after sales service at Nelson Beds, Nelson's only bedding manufacturer.
Welcome to Smuggler's Pub and Cafe, open seven days a week with free parking all day. Our lunch menus have that fat old fashioned flavour where we treat you like treasure with the food you'll savour. We cater for children, grannies and granddads too, with special rates and privileges given to the elderly lunchtime crew. Our staff are friendly and kind and want to see you all come back time after time. Daytime or evening, it doesn't matter. Give us a call on 546-4084 and we'll be happy to spoil you. Hi there, Julian Toon, Waimea Telecommunications. We install and maintain domestic and commercial satellite TV, UHF Freeview and mainland TV installations in the Nelson Tasman regions. We specialise in Panasonic telephone systems and provide communications, Wi-Fi, IT and wiring for internet, fibre, computers and DSL systems. At Waimea Telecommunications, we also provide specialist electronic systems for features such as a security camera you can watch on your TV, visitor alert systems and much more. Improve your security and communication and entertainment today. Call us on Waimea Telecommunications on 021 47 2297 ytel.co.nz we're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power, electronics toys, sound systems, cables and much, much more. Jacob. 120 Hardy Street, Nelson. World War I was a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum. For budding performers or people that just want to give it a go, there's a free talk and mask workshops on the 28th of April 2016 at the Elmer Turner Library in Nelson. Workshop times are 10am until noon. The youth workshop is from 1pm until 3pm. There's no cost but numbers are very limited. If you wish to register, contact Lloyd at Nelson Arts Council. Calling all Bulldog breed owners. You're invited to bring your dogs to Anzac Park this Wednesday, the 27th of April at 1pm for a walk uptown. This is a chance to show the public of Nelson how family friendly these dogs are. Children are also welcome. Don't miss it. All breeds and mixes welcome. Focus is on showing off well-trained people and dog friendly dogs. On behalf of the team here at Mainland Television News, Thank you for joining us and we'll bring you the latest news and events from around the region again tomorrow. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air. Are you looking for a scooter, walker, wheelchair, baby seats or push chairs? Then come in and see the Nelson Region Specialist at Mobility for You. 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. We have a huge selection of scooters, walkers, wheelchairs and accessories along with a free booklet guide. We also provide a breakdown service if you ever get a puncher or a flat battery. We have fully equipped service vans to rescue you. 
Hi, I'm Robin Jordan and I invite you to call in and see the friendly team at Mobility for You, 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power, electronics toys, sound systems, cables, and much, much more. Jacob. 120 Hardy Street, Nelson. Welcome, me hearties, to Smuggler's Pub and Cafe. Famous for hearty meals, craft owls, and a friendly service way. Sensational seasonal menus with meals all day and evening too. Or sell in for a snack with special menus for young smugglers and you. Settle in for a jolly old time. Relax and enjoy our award winning dining and lovely fine wine. Decked out in an old worldly way, we're open seven days. Book or come on in to 8 Muratai Street, not far from a beach walk or swim. Phone 54640084. Hi there, Julian Toon, Waimea Telecommunications. We install and maintain domestic and commercial satellite TV, UHF Freeview and mainland TV installations in the Nelson Tasman regions. We specialise in Panasonic telephone systems and provide communications, Wi-Fi, IT and wiring for internet, fibre, computers and DSL systems. At Waimea Telecommunications, we also provide specialist electronic systems for features such as a security camera you can watch on your TV, visitor alert systems and much more. Improve your security and communication and entertainment today. Call us on Waimea Telecommunications on 021 47 2297 ytel.co.nz Nelson Tire Center. Great prices, great service. Buy your own Bryford trailer. All types, all sizes. See Colin Douglas for your tires and batteries.
ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Lock your Soyuz hatch and put your helmet on. Ground control to Major Tom. Commencing countdown engines on. Detach from station and may God's love be with you. This is ground control to Major Tom. You've really made the grave. And the papers want to know whose shirts you wear. But it's time to guide the capsule if you dare. 